Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Dave, and we are the IB English Guys, and today we're going to talk about a comic from Grant Snyder. He's a great, great artist, and we like his work. It makes us think about life. Yeah, Mr. Jaws, I know there are a lot of people out there using Grant Snyder. I've seen him in examination sessions, so hopefully this will be a useful video. Yeah, we think so. So we want to first talk about the difference between a cartoon and a comic, and I think this is these are words that that sometimes people use interchangeably, and we're gonna to try to give you our definition for how we might differentiate. Mr. Giles, are we wearing the same shirt? <laughs> well, mine's pink, yours is white, but I'm whatever. so sick of this guy, <laughs> man. All right, continue, please. All right, come on now. All right, so, <laughs> so a comic, a cartoon, is a single panel illustration that's going to communicate a message and communicate a moment in time. We like to think about the works of Patrick Chappette, the cartoon, the cartoonist, the political cartoonist, or Liza Donnelly. These again would, would be we would call a cartoon. Okay, so Mr. Jaws, that leads me to believe that a comic has multiple panels, has gutters between the panels, and is more of a story rather than just a singular panel. Would that be accurate? Yeah, we like that. So multiple panels and not capturing a moment in time, but telling a story. So this is our definition. I think it's not a deal breaker if you called a comic a cartoon. But we we're use them call... interchangeably, but they are slightly different. Right. right. So let's talk about some features of comics and cartoons. We're going to go to our famous acronym. What is it, Andrew? Coral needs our care and love, Mr. Giles. Coral uh, needs our care and love. We like uh, that. We're in Thailand, as you know. Mr. Giles, C, composition. Uh, we're thinking about elements like what's in the foreground, what's in the background. Uh, are there things positioned on the left of the frame, the right of the frame? That's composition. Yeah, graphic weight. We're just thinking about sort of all the visual elements and how they're composed. The N, the needs, is the narrative. This is a story. We want to think about the characters. We want to think about how they're drawn. We want to think about their facial features. We want to also think about, is there a plot? Especially with a comic, where we might see a story and a plot. So yeah. we're thinking about narrative elements of our of our comics and cartoons. The O stands for objects and symbols. Now typically in comics or cartoons you will see concrete nouns they're drawn. Uh, they're often very symbolic and value and you want to think about what larger abstract idea might some of these objects represent. Objects and symbols, very important. Yeah, good, and that's good for this one. The next one is uh, C for color. We want to think about, again, the color is going to, again, have all kinds of different um, moods that it might it evoke. So we want to think about that. We want to also think about light, lighting, um, shading, and things like that with color. Yeah, and of course, language, love. Uh, you're thinking about what are the words? Are there speech bubbles? Are there thought bubbles? Is it more voiceover narration, right? Like how is language being used? And what are the impact of some of these word choices from the cartoonist? Right, okay, once again, we're gonna look at a comic by Grant Snyder. Um, he is a, a prolific illustrator, and his comics are lifestyle comics that make us think about our uh, different aspects of our life um, and for, for our own self-improvement and self-reflection. Really. Yeah, he might talk about things like you know meditation. He might talk about the importance of reading, just really important aspects of our lifestyle that he wants us to think about. That's right. So this comic is called Higher Purpose, and you can have a look at it on the screen here. And We're going to talk through some of the different elements and things that we see. So we're doing a close reading of the different panels in this comic. Students, remember, it's a reading test first. Don't race to write your paper one response. Spend some time reading and thinking. You'll have plenty more to write about if you do some good reading. That's right. So we see, first of all, it's called higher purpose. We're thinking about we're thinking about the sort of bigger purpose in life. We're thinking about these big questions about it could be religious higher purpose. We're thinking about, about life's meaning. These are very existential thoughts. Yeah, and that, that, that use of coloring there too, Mr. Giles, it almost appears as a label, you know, something red, it catches our attention, like alerts us. This is important. You know, yeah. we're looking for a higher purpose. You don't see that coloring much else. So I just, before we talk about panel by panel, I just want to look at the composition of the, the entire comic. And I think one thing that we notice is we see obvious, uh, you know, the first four panels are, are, are white in backgrounds, a lot of white space. And then we have this sort of different colors in the, um, the last four panels. Again, this is inviting us to see the passage of time in a, in a 24 hour yeah. time period. And while we're looking at the comic holistically, I can't but help but notice in panels one to four, there's a linear progression going up. I can, I almost see that the man is, is plot points on a graph. I could draw a perfect linear upward sloping line. Like that indicates growth of some kind. Yeah. This and character's gonna grow. I also noticed that all of the panels have are vertical, right? And they're very tall, these tall panels. Again, this connects to the whole title of higher purpose. 
um, and and this whole idea of, of being elevated and searching for something yeah, bigger than ourselves. Last comment, looking at panels five through eight, we notice that the ground disappears. So this character is going to grow over panels one to four, and then five to eight looks like he's going to be up in the stratosphere, up into outer space, Mr. Jones. I like that. This guy's growing. So okay. that's a bit of composition of just all those visual elements and how they're put together. So the first particular um, panel that we're going to look at, panel number one, we see this character drawn in a very nondescript way. And this is true for all of the panels. It's really interesting. He doesn't really, his facial features are really indistinguishable. We can't really see details of his face. That's per, that's quite an interesting choice. Yeah, and I think the posture of the character is interesting as well. Uh, he's almost hunched over like the thinker. Uh, who's who's the thinker? Yeah, Rodin, uh, the, the sculptor, the the thinker, right? And, and he's, I pens he's, he's pensive. He's pensive and he's, he's playing with the yo-yo. That's something that we might imagine doing when we're thinking in great detail, pondering the future, pondering a higher purpose of life. It's a really good first frame. Right, so the yo-yo is kind of symbolic for, for that. And again, we, we don't see him doing very much, but he's definitely in thought. And then we have the voiceover narration. So we notice that at the top, we see these captions. They're written at the top, and they're not a speech bubble. They're not a thought bubble, but they're the narrator's um, thoughts. So we'll call that voiceover narration that, throughout the text. Yeah, we can assume those are the thoughts and feelings of Grant Snyder. Yeah, and they're very honest about how it's difficult to remain content. We understand that. So the second panel, now we see the first person. We see him talking about, I'm always seeking for a higher purpose. What does the illustration show us in that second panel? Well, Mr. Jaws, the first thing I notice is as the character's climbing the ladder, he had his, his hand up like he's peering off into the distance, into the future, like he's looking at a, a final destination of some kind. That This is the beginning of a journey, and we see him climbing up the ladder to start his journey. That's great. So we understand how the language is connecting directly to that image of seeking. That's really good. Um, and again, um, that, that the clouds are symbolic, the ladder is symbolic, so we see already more use of symbolism in this. Sorry, just to go back to that word seeking, I love the connotation of the word seeking, you know, and, and just all it implies. Like this is someone who has great curiosity, someone who's not satisfied with their station in life and is looking for more. That's Sorry, great. I'm going long. Panel that, three. That's okay. Panel three relates to seeking because where do we seek information? We seek information in books and literature. And I think this is a powerful message. He's not using a phone here, is he, Mr. Cohen? Mr. Jaws, there's no media there. There's no phone. There's no electronics. But what I do see is a stack of books. He's almost positioned these these books to, to form a chair. It's not just one book he needs for a higher purpose of knowledge. He needs many books. Yeah, and this is connecting to what it, what he's. This is something he's also seeking. He's seeking that hidden message behind what something that he's been missing. Fourth panel, he's also seeking a chance to be more daring. So all these panels link to that second panel where he's seeking these things. Well, uh, Mr. Jaws, sorry, I'm looking at the cat and the tree. Typically, that's something you see in film or, or in literature. Call the fire department. Come get the cat. No, this person's <laughs> daring. He's going to do it himself. Right? That's so right. I find it. He's a risk taker. He so is. So in search for this meaning, he has to take some risks. And we notice also, like we mentioned before in the composition, he's crawling up the panel, he's and the it's so the, precarious. Yeah, he's he's about to fall. He's, Giles, there's no more space in this frame. I know. Life's about risk. So now we see sunset. This is the orange, the orange hued panel that's panel number five. I love that. He's talking about a vast sparkling insight. That's really powerful imagery there. Yeah, and Mr. Jaws, I can't help but notice just how high he's climbed. You know, he's I can't is that the cat down there at the bottom? You know, he's just so tiny, and we have this sense that he's very precarious, trying to balance himself. Yeah. Uh, and, and he's he's achieving insight. The books are gone. He's he's high in the sky, Mr. Jones. He's still seeking these things he's though, too, still right? Seeking, yeah. And we also see sunset as a time of reflection, so that works. And then we also see this moment of pure balance. Now the sun has really kind of gone down, and we see the sort of posture of him doing this yoga pose, which is again connected to meditation and philosophy and pure balance is really what he's seeking. He yeah. wants that balance. And, and I, I can't help but notice the coloring of the background as well, Mr. Giles. These really colorful blues and purples and oranges and reds. I just think we're getting into this, this he's going into this ambient phase. He's in the stratosphere. He's, he is really in a pure moment uh, where we have some inner peace. Yeah. And then the penultimate panel, panel number seven, the higher I seek, the more clearly I sense. He's not finished the sentence, so we see that climbing up that pole even further with the flag there, and we get this sense of like possibility because the sentence is unfinished. 
he's waiting for that last panel to hit us with his punchline. Yeah, I didn't notice that. That's the use of the dash there is really skillfully done, right? It's really skillful, and I think that Mr. Jaws, the moon I'm just in the sky. The cat, the cat's making a comeback. It's, <laughs> yes, making, it's making me wonder if part of his realization is that he needs to be, he needs company. I don't know. Yeah, he's playful. He's playful. He's not taking life too seriously, but we also see him reflecting on life. And I think the cartoon is meant to be playful. It's not meant to be. You know, woe is me, life is insignificant. It's meant to be like, hey, life is uh, is a mystery, but it's okay. Wait, wait, let's look at that last panel. There's some great stuff to discuss. Yeah, the last, last panel. panel. First of all, we have the planet in outer space, and he's higher than the planet, but we bring back the yo-yo, and he's yo -yo's still... yo-yo's back. I know, and we notice that the caption now is down at the bottom because this is the sort of like final realization or almost letdown because he's realizing Ooh. the more he seeks... The more he understands or senses that his he's insignificant, he's actually quite small. Mr. And Giles, tiny. that was a really clever insight you just had. How the text moved position to the bottom, sort of to simulate or emulate that letdown. It's a you're pretty smart. Man. I don't know. Like I, it's a real it's a it's a bit of a oh man that's harsh. He's yeah, had this he's, great moment and then bam he's letting well, us. Well, we talk about circular structure, Mr. Giles, in writing. We see circular structure in this comic as well. It's the same hunched over position being pensive and playing with the yo-yo. So it turns out that he's really, despite all the thinking and all the reading, he he's really no better off than he was at the beginning in terms of having a complete understanding of the universe. Yeah, it's kind of lighthearted, but at the same time philosophical. And it makes us think about our own cosmic insignificance, but it also has this value of being a seeker. And I love that. Mr. He's, Giles, Grant Snyder looks like a great body of work. I'm going to check this guy out. Yeah, we're all over this guy. He's, he's fantastic. Folks, in closing, we hope you understand that, hey, looking at a multi panel comic can be pretty fun. You know, you think about how the panels relate to one another, how they combine language and image to communicate message. Mr. Jobs, I could write a lot about this. Let's just go to that guiding question one more time and leave our viewers with that guiding question. Yeah, how does the artist use text and image to communicate a message? So, folks, go ahead and make yourselves a rudimentary outline. If you want to take a crack at the paper, go for it. What should they do after that, Giles? Yeah, after you've made your rudimentary outline, after you've uh, written your paper, then come back and see us because we're going to talk about a sample response that tries to break down this this particular comic by Grant Snyder. Folks, we'll catch you next time. We'll go over that response and continue our pathway to paper one success. But we won't wear the same shirt. I hate you. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>